Hello, Mike. They, they can hear me. They can't hear you yet, though. They'll be able to hear you in a second. Go ahead and talk. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> okay, they can hear you now. Uh, I'm, I'm a bit little. I'm a little hot. A little hot. What are what are you guys all doing? Not watching Far Cry? <laughs> yeah. What do you guys think? It's just gonna be another Far Cry? You want <laughs> no. ungrateful swine? They gotta do something. Nah, maybe they don't. I don't know. You know, it, they're making this one like right as a follow up to the last one. It's gonna be more Far Cry, and I, I mean that's fine, right? That's what a lot of people want. Apparently. I kind of I think uh, Primal was my breaking point. I was like, man, even with this vastly different setting, this is still just the sure as far cry. Yeah. Let me. Uh, okay. Let me turn myself up a little bit now. Hello. This is me talking at a normal level, and I. That's pretty good. And then Mike is going to talk again. Let me get Mike. Mike get its proper position. All right. I'm, these things. I'm talking. Hi, everyone. It's me. I'm back. I've unvanished. Jeff realized his mistake yes he's back <laughs> oh man we're losing a lot of frames and i just don't know about that let me uh, make sure i'm not uploading anything i'll check that in a second okay yes yeah, so we'll say you know we can take our time yeah we'll get it fixed mic check everybody mic check we're doing the mic check this is episode 198 right the thing says 197 yeah i'll update that hang on that's what i check that every time now everybody because yeah, jeff thanks. is such a fuck up you see <laughs> All right, Mike. I've I've uh, intensified your compressor. So talk again. I'm talking. It probably doesn't help that I <laughs> I have Top Fifty Fourteen open right now. I'm closing that. Oh my god. <laughs> so that'll probably help. Okay. It's closed now. We're doing we're doing okay. It looks like it's not losing frames anymore. Oh, as soon as I say that, now we're, we're okay. It's gonna be a little bit wonky, but that's fine. Let me double check. I'm not uploading anything. Uh, or downloading anything. All, all this pornography, Mike. That's what it is. Of course. Yeah, that must be. Yeah. Oh, look at this. The whole the whole name of the show is just the one from last week. I am sorry. <laughs> I don't know if I accept your apology. <laughs> yeah, I just, I, I maybe, maybe I'm a mess. We are even like, yeah, we take our time to get set up. The Far Cry thing's happy. Like, I'm ready to start. I did all the things I need to do to I did start not, this read. I did not do anything. <laughs> Uh, all right. What, what what should the name of the show be? What happened this week? There was a lot, and I can't remember any of it right now. There was now. what? Uh, Dragon Quest, Sonic, uh, Horizon. Can we put Dragon Quest and Sonic and at back. the start? Horizon. I, feel, I feel like there was more, even more important stuff than that. Let me look at my rundown here. Really? I mean, I I, I care no, about. You're right. You're right. Sonic and and things. So maybe that's why I think those are more important. Let's see. I'll take a look. Too. So the plug into stream elements. I'm sure chat chat will help us. Switch no, switch pro didn't actually have. I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna say okay. E3 2021 colon Horizon Dragon Quest and Sonic. Yeah. So I see what you're doing here. You're trying to say that you don't think Sonic and Dragon Quest are good for SEO, so you're leading with Horizon. So one I'm leading you. with E3. Two. I'm leading with E3. But yes, fair enough. Yeah, that's true. You got you got yeah. me. I'm guilty. Yeah. I don't know if I should demand you change it, or I'm afraid you're right. I don't know which one is more true. <laughs> I don't know which one is more true. All right. Um, Let me turn my. I gotta turn my heat off. It's like I'm gonna be sweating. Why am I swearing so much today? I'm not that usually that much of a potty mouth. I swear. It's just being around me. This. All right, everybody. Um, having, to, having to yell at you on Twitter for a whole. Okay. For everything. <laughs> Nick Turbo. Well, I, don't we didn't we're not gonna miss this chat. I miss AJ. Anyone miss AJ? <laughs> we'll get AJ back on once he figures out his mic situation. There you go. And not not his brother, his his actual audio mic. Um <laughs> the mic situation uh, is strong. <laughs> okay. So we've renamed the video. Have you and... even given me a rundown? I've not given you a rundown. Where, do, can, I send, <laughs> can I just send it to you in Discord? I'm just going to send it to you in Discord. You can send it to me in Discord. Not that I really, not that I particularly even need the yeah, rundown. Yeah, you never even look. I look. Well, what, what are we even allowed to say? We've been, I've just, we've both been playing the one thing we can't talk about. Yeah. Right? Yes. So. And, and I, I, I could talk a little bit about Biomutant. 
but uh, we, we've been um like th this show's gonna be so jam-packed i'm like i'm not even sure we're gonna have time yeah. and I, who wants to hear me talk about bio mutant yeah i mean look yeah i played yeah you know, you know, i did play a little mass effect so and i you guys talked about that last quite a bit i don't think there's any it, you know i'll tell you right now i th i think mass effect one is still good so yeah if we need to talk about it at the end we will but yeah there's gonna be a lot of things uh, are we still doing the usual stream elements thing? There's just a spot where I'm going to talk up through all those. Yeah. Is that okay? No, yeah. Just make sure. But you asked, I know is, that we is, were, there, is there an issue of some sort? What's the problem? Well, you were talking last time about how we might change it oh, up. Oh, yes, because we got a lot. Of, yes, we got a lot I, the one time. I, mean, I, I, I think it's fine. I think it's fine. Uh, I, think it's, I think E3 is going to be super busy, yeah. but I think what we should do is um, uh, during E3 week, we'll do separate shows. That's uh, fine. Yeah. To, to be clear, everybody, keep giving me your money. Don't like be like, oh, they're getting overwhelmed. We better not super chat them. That, no. that does remind me. I feel like I think I owe you a, a, a payment for YouTube I think stuff. You do. And, I, was uh, say, and, I was gonna say, maybe I should say, send Jeff your money. <laughs> uh, and the podcast. Uh, I've started putting ads on the podcasting again because uh, An Anchor lets us do that now. We've made some money oh, there, so, so I owe you some money. But you have to help oh, with baby. those. I'm gonna make you do an ad read. Everyone, everyone oh. prefers if Mike does the ad reads. So of I'll course. Talk to you well, about I'm that. the one with the silky, sexy voice. Of course, yeah. Yes. Uh, I'm just gonna hit this button and we'll see what happens because I sound like this. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. You're not forgiven. Oh, all right, everybody. Is everyone feeling good? Should we get started? I, Far Cry, I Far, Far Cry Six looking sweet. You know, I, I, I did. I have had that presentation for a couple of weeks, and I was looking at. It, I'm like, this does look like fun. I might be ready for another Far Cry game. Yeah, it's it's been a break for me. I'm not watching this thing right now. I know you already saw it. I mm -hmm. mean, yeah, we'll see. I mean, I, I don't know. There's you... something about something about just like going around a tropical world, a tropical like location, and uh, I don't know, blowing stuff up. It's it really speaks to the American in me. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> um, all right. Like <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. This is why Fair we don't enough. put this stuff in the podcast. Um, okay, everybody, I think we are ready. Let you know what, let's check the let's check the video, make sure we look good. Yes, make sure I always look good. That, that looks good. Um, all right, but I don't have your video, so of course. Let me see here. <laughs> All oh, right, I have, the, I have the video all messed you up. You have a set for threes. You yeah, have a set for threes. For a three -way. Yep. All right, let's see. Oh, oh, there I am. Hey. Yay. Left behind door number one. Yay. It's, it's bald Jeff. All right, your your head is far bigger than mine, so let's adjust that. Well, that's probably actually true. Actually, no, you're one of the people who has a head about my size. We're both I have a, big I have a very Yes, I have a very large, large head, too. Did you also struggle with getting a mask that fit you for a while? Yeah, and... um. I remember like getting my like every, for some reason like everyone in my sixth grade class measured their heads and I had by far the largest head and I'm like I don't know this is something I, don't know, I, I don't remember this for the rest of my life yeah <laughs> yeah I just remember for the rest of my life of course now I've been traumatized by that at least yeah all right I think we're at the right height so now if I just adjust everything else clearly a little too low oh never mind I'm watching the YouTube feed you got it you got it I'm a little behind that's okay and then if big I big head boys. It's a big head boy podcast. Yep. Mike, the worst Minotti. You haven't met my other brother, Chris Minotti. So. <laughs> the worst Minotti yet. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see here. I think we're good. I think we're good to start. I think we've done the mic check. Oh, man. Do we keep losing frames? I'm sorry about that, everybody. And I, I just I don't know what it is. I've tried. I've tried to fix this over and over. I think I'm just going to unplug this uh, this thing here. Hang on. hope for the best all right you don't have a you don't have a firewall or something do i have a fire? is it possible i've just had a firewall turned on for something this entire time and that's why i mean how, how is it when you did it with those two was is it just a thing with like me and you or no i can't remember i think it was hmm. uh i think it was about the same so i think it's my stuff i don't know i'm, I'm losing uh, frames I'm... so it's not just you clearly because it's frame it's me uploading to twitch uh so there's something well, I'm there glad, <clears throat> i'm glad it's not my fault that makes me feel good yeah i don't i don't think it is and uh, honestly like right now zencaster sounds pretty good um and discord looks pretty good yeah i don't know we're just gonna go for it i'll uh i'll record it as well and if there's issues usually the good thing about youtube is 
it tends to just keep doing the audio and the and the the video sort of catches up and stutters a little bit but people could still hear us and i guess that's the important yeah, thing. yeah i mean i'm looking at the thing it looks okay yeah <laughs> and and Mohammed and Nick Turbo are saying free Palestine in the chat, which of course, and uh, he's like, just a reminder. That's fair. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, hey, everybody. I think we're ready to start. Uh, I think, you know what? Let's check the opening theme and then. Oh my God. I am, I am so sorry. That's the wrong music. I am off my game today. You are a mess. There it is. All right. Wow. Okay, everybody. Just slap me around a little bit. All right, I am good. Mike's good. I need to hit the record button on the podcast, and then we're ready. Okay, Mike, you good to do this? No, I'm quitting. Yes, Five, four. Wait, hang on. Wait, what? <laughs> no, it, it, that was not my fault. Zincaster went, uh, went, because Zincaster does a countdown now. It goes three, two, one, zero. Zero, zero, zero. And it didn't start recording for like the first half of the song. Uh, needs to get some countdown tips from Ubisoft. Yeah, for real. <laughs> I'm going to have to hit the new recording button. I think uh, you're going to get knocked into here, I think. Hopefully you see you're in the green room. All right, we're good. All right. All right, I had to rejoin the thing. Whatever you click, kick me out. I, I, I did just, I just started back. recording. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. Uh, let's do it again. Five. I'm going to wait for it to actually start recording this time. Okay. Five, four. you're busy let's do this welcome to the games beat decides podcast this is the podcast where we decide everything about the world of games so you don't have to think for yourself i'm your host jeff grubb with me is mike minotti today's episode we're going to talk about a lot of news a lot of video game news might not even have time to talk about playing video games themselves and really that's a good thing so we're not in a place where we could talk about a lot of the games we're playing so we'll talk you know about the news it's e3 week uh, E3 weeks, I guess, has begun. Uh, it, it really feels like um, a bunch of game companies got to, got together and decided, hey, we're not going to like fully participate in E3, or if we do, we still want to have like some time beforehand to uh, establish ourselves. We want to be like E3 adjacent, and that's kind of seemed like what happened this week, Mike. What, what do you think? Are you is it E3 time for you? Yeah. Oh gosh, this this week has totally felt like E3 to me. I mean, there was a few events, but they were a couple of them were ones I actually cared about a good bit, so that uh, kind of did it. Oh gosh, they announced the the release date of Far Cry Six just now. Oh, did they? Well, oh well. Yeah, October seventh. Yeah, whatever. I'll send yeah. it to our bosses. Yeah, uh, October sixth. Okay, so yeah, we're we're recording this. Or was I wrong? By the, what did I just say? October seventh. October seventh. So we're already making mistakes here on the podcast. Far Cry Six launches October seventh. It's okay. confusing. <laughs> um, it, we're doing this while while Ubisoft is uh, announcing all that stuff. Uh, they're doing a stream. I think uh, it just ended. So yeah, it, it's it is um a Far Cry game. I guess we could say that. So, but I mean, that, this that's what's been happening all this week is presentations for new games. Uh, and we'll talk about all that in the news here real quick uh first though let's just get the credits out of the way uh you can get more from mike and me at gamesbeat.com if you have something to share with us you can email us games plus podcast adventurebeat.com that's the plus sign uh thank you to carlos ain who is insane the rain music on youtube for the use of our theme song if you're listening to this on the website player widget you can subscribe to the to the podcast on apple Podcasts. Google Podcasts, Spotify, and more. If you like the show, rate us on Apple Podcasts. It helps people find the show or wherever you're listening. And if you're on YouTube right now, give a thumbs up. Those thumbs up really help other people find it. It puts it in their feeds and stuff. So give a thumbs up, help people find the show, especially if they're just getting done with the Far Cry 6 thing. They can come like, here and watch subscribe, us now. subscribe, ring that bell. Mike is a natural, everybody. Uh, join the Discord. Uh, there's a link in the description. Uh, for now, there's a link in the description. We had a problem with some bots this week in the Discord. And so uh, I might have to rethink how we do join in the Discord in the future. But for now, there is a link in the description that should work. And uh, if it doesn't, let me know. And I'll let you know if things have changed or if there's like a special link. And you just hit me up on Twitter at Jeff Grubb. Uh, and then you could uh, get into the secret channels inside the Discord. One way to for sure get in the Discord is join the Patreon, patreon.com slash Jeff Grubb. 
All right, uh, Mike, how you doing? I'm, and, and while, while you're answering that, I'm going to turn on my NVIDIA broadcast so people can no longer hear my children. I am doing pretty good. Yeah, I was banished last week, so I had some time to reevaluate my life and refocus. Uh, and now I'm back to show Did you find your the center? superior Minotti. Did you find your yeah. center? Did you center yeah, yourself and ever that? Yeah, okay. surprisingly. <laughs> never mind. I was about to make a bad joke anyways. That sneeze just saved me. <laughs> uh, Mike, I, I missed you so much. I'm so glad you're back. Yeah, I know. You need me, you fool. You were, you were a mess on social media without me. Mm -hmm. I, had to, it, I just had to tell you to shut the fuck up yesterday, finally. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, listen, I thought I thought the kill zone thing would kill uh, and, and really just made people very, very mad at me. Uh, no I one likes kill zone, Jeff, except our old boss, Dan Shu, likes kill zone. I remember. Yeah. No one yeah. cares. Everyone is happy. They're just making Horizon now. Dan Shu likes every console shooter, though. I remember him get, like really, really being into Grawl, uh, Ghost Recon, Advanced Warfare, or whatever it was. Was, when... was he into Haze? That's the barometer. Okay, that's, a, that's what, we should ask him. We should like, ask what him. What to ask him? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I don't know, Mike. I'm glad you're back. Uh, how are you feeling? Is are you ready to like just spend? A, here's the weird thing. E3's begun, and now we're gonna go to Menor Memorial Day weekend, and it's gonna be like a long yeah. weekend. It's really yeah. weird. I'm feeling weird it about weird. that. Yeah, I, I'm like I'm gonna take I guess a day off on Monday, but also I feel like I might wake up that day and be like, man, I should just get a bunch of work out of the way so we could be ready as more stuff gets announced. Right. Yeah, uh, where it's like it's like I'm kind of like in e3 mode now and now all of a sudden it's like all right pause that for a yeah bit yeah I, back. It, it's it's a weird transition i, I mean I, it's you know it really is still the, the game mess it really is a mess where um things are just kind of happening when they happen and they like we're getting a week of stuff now we'll probably get maybe fewer announcements in the next week because it is going to be a shorter week for companies in, in the united states and then the week after that it's like okay time to ramp right back up for a lot of e3 stuff and then e3 proper starts like the week after that is that how it goes? Something like that. So, yeah, I almost, I, I, I almost like kept thinking like, oh, next week is like E3, and it's not. No, really. I mean, there, there will be things. Yeah. So but, you, uh, next week is is um a short week, and then yeah. So then the week after that's not even E3 because the E3 starts the weekend, the, that oh, following gosh. weekend. So yeah, we're still it, it, it's like here, but it's still kind of far away. So uh, I, I but that doesn't mean there's not a ton of news. Uh, I, I have. A rundown here of a lot of stuff, Mike. And the first story I have is a non-story because we were all waiting for it to happen and then nothing happened. I'm talking about the new hmm. Super Nintendo Switch Pro SI edition. Uh, this thing, Mike, is this thing even real? It's got to be real. There, there seems to be enough hints and things out there. I think everybody thought it was going to be announced like late last night or today, and that didn't happen. There was an Amazon listing for a, what was it? A new Nintendo Switch Plus, which better <laughs> just be Amazon covering their bases. Because this thing is called that. That's a fake listing. Like, yeah, yeah that, that's me. not real. So, yeah, it's it's real. Uh, yeah. Gosh. I, I, I don't know. I, I think it's, um, I'm choosing to go from, like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense still. I, I'm just going to say it's not real anymore. Uh, because I'm getting sick of it. I'm really? sick of it, Mike. Yeah, it's just not real. It's fake. Every, everyone's been lying. Uh, it's all made up. Nintendo's f playing us for fools. Um, no, it's real. I mean, because all, all these announcements we had this week, right? Like, people were, for whatever reason, like, they wouldn't say what consoles it was coming out for, and they were, like, coming to the new, plat like, modern platforms. And it was like, well, why can't you just say, unless, like, they don't want to say coming to Switch yet or Super Switch or whatever, which yeah. I don't know if there's actually any, you know, thing there. I don't know if there's actually a fire with that smoke or if I'm just being silly. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I do think so. The reason that it, it did come up this week is there was a Bloomberg report and uh, Emily Rogers, who's a good Nintendo insider, um, both separately said like, hey, uh, this thing's going to get announced and maybe get announced before you think maybe get announced before E3. And um, when you look at the schedule, like before announced it before E3, like the reason people were thinking yesterday is because you look at the schedule next week is a short week uh in, in america so nintendo of america is going to be coming back to the office on tuesday and that gives them less time to, to sort of like prep themselves for this sort of thing um so do it you know yesterday and get it out of the way um that didn't happen and now now it feels like okay so if they announced it before e3 uh and really the the the, the way it was worded uh, in both the bloomberg and emily rogers tweets was you know it could come before e3 but also it could come after e3 so we're just kind of still waiting to see I'm what nintendo's thinking. gonna I mean, do I mean, 
might just be at E3 also. I mean, yeah, why not? Totally. Yeah, I mean, and why, I, that's what I would think. Yeah, why I mean, not? it's Nintendo, so you expect them to do the weird thing. Like, oh, maybe they will just announce the new console thing first. But, like, most people would be like, that's a big deal. Why don't we put that in our E3 show and get people excited? And we'll have a lot of people watching that. Yeah, and, and I think that makes a lot of sense. I mean, I they haven't shown a lot of hardware at E3 in, in the recent past. But that doesn't mean they wouldn't do it this time. Especially if they are tying this in with a bunch of games that are going to launch alongside it that will work on the original switch but are clearly you know superior on the new switch uh and they're going to show those games at e3 like to me it just kind of it makes sense you bundle those all together and show off the hardware and the games uh that would be that would be fantastic that would make right, for a really you, good you show like, you can start the show with that like hey and now you'll be like here's all the games we're showing and like here they are running on the new switch and woo you know right you could show off ports of some things right you'd be like wow look far cry 6 is going to be on switch you but you didn't think that could happen here it is right so stuff like that and and you know it's to give, give people like kind of an expectation of, of like what this system is going to be capable of uh games made for this new switch should be like that like it could be far cry 6 uh, as long as it's, it has DLSS support, which is like NVIDIA's, uh, you know, magic, basically. Um, and, and it could run at a lower resolution, but it look like it, it look like 1080p or look like look look like 720p um, on the hand, in the handheld mode, uh, which, you know, DLSS and the handheld, handheld mode, we'll have to wait and see. But definitely in, when you're putting it on the TV, they'll be able to upscale it to 4K in a really, really easy way. And uh, that'll be really cool to kind of get these modern games coming to this handheld now. Um, but uh you know beyond that like we'll have to kind of just wait and see what the details are uh i i don't know i i, I do think we're, we'll hear about it around e3 time i don't think we're gonna have to wait too much longer like the smoke here is probably signifying a fire in terms of uh we're not gonna have to wait until the holiday before we hear about this or wait until like january for a march release um we're gonna get this soon i think so that's right, exciting so I mean, especially if it is going to be a holiday thing we're gonna yes. have to hear about it soon I mean, yeah, I, I am not like super like this isn't really the thing I'm most excited to see from Nintendo. I'm almost more excited to see Breath of the Wild 2 and some, you know, new mm -hmm. games anyway. So I, I know there's going to be a Switch upgrade at some point. It, it's it's going to come and I'm kind of OK. Like, yeah, when we see it, we see it. It'll be exciting, but I'm not going to let this thing dominate my E3 mind space. Right. If it gets announced, it gets announced. Yep, definitely. I'm going to uh, let people know they can ask uh, Super Chats if they want, and um, we'll answer those after the news section for sure. Or if they relate to any news stories as they're coming up, we'll do that uh, as they come up. Um, okay. We have a bunch of questions from our uh, Patreon, pa Patreon supporters as well. Um, all right. Mike, uh, so that's the Super Switch. We'll see. Um, who knows? Maybe they'll announce it while we're doing this. That would be great. Uh, probably not, though. Uh we like i said there's a lot to happen this week the next thing on my list here is horizon forbidden west state of play um mm -hmm. not like there's no headline news story other than there was no release date but mike you did right. write about this so i guess tell me about that and then we'll talk about what we think of the game yeah that's i think that's going to be a, a something we see a lot of kind of going into this this e3 thing more so than we would expect i almost was expecting it with far cry that's why we just started this during that stream I was like, well, you already got the video. They're not going to announce the release date. And then they actually did. So, But I think a lot of people, you know, we, we said this before, everything's been affected by uh, by COVID. I know people like don't like hearing that sometimes, but it's true. So everybody is at least a little bit behind for where they thought they would be. So it's a little scary to pick a release date right now and stick to it. But it still was weird to see with Horizon because it was this big, like, solo presentation just about that game yeah and you know after ratchet and clank it's the next big sony game right so it seemed like yeah this is when they're going to say that this is their holiday game and they didn't even really give like a time frame they didn't even say holiday 2021 or fall 2021 so they're you know it seems like they are giving themselves that safety net of like yeah maybe this isn't coming out this year i still think it probably will but yeah, there's a safety net there now. And I think we're going to be seeing a lot of safety nets at E3. I think we're going to see a lot of people kind of afraid to say like, this game is coming out on November 10th. I, I think you're, I think you're right. And I, um, I, I expect to see that a lot. I think that's the biggest motivating factor here of just not making promises that you're not sure you can keep. But about a, a part of it is also, 
you know maybe we know our release schedule but all our partners are still kind of unsure about when their games are going to come out and our competitors are not saying when their games are going to coming are coming out we don't know a release date for breath of the wild 2 or halo and we do want to have like some of this stuff in mind as we pick our release dates uh but I i'm sure that's just like that's like reason number two under what you just said which is things are uncertain why make promises to your customers if for some reason you can't keep them uh that and and um, yeah, I, I said this, I was on the Min Max uh, episode last night, but they have, no company has seemingly been punished by consumers for not giving an early release date. Like if you hold a release date until two months out and you say, hey, hey, it's coming out two months from now, those games like from Nintendo that have done that have no. sold really well. They've the only been, game that's, been, what's been punished is Cyberpunk for sticking to a yes. release date that they shouldn't have sticked to. Yeah, everyone knows that. Yep. So, right. So why, why throw now at some point, if they do think that the game is probably going to come out this fall, they are going to have to say that uh, they are going to run out sure, of time. No. Yeah, but they have a couple more months until they really need to put that out there. Yep, I, uh, I, I agree. Uh, I, what do you think of the game itself? I think it looks good. I, I, I bounced off of pretty. I bounced, off, I bounced off Horizon 1 because I was playing Breath of the Wild, came right. to that game, It just and it didn't fit. I, I have, have it on PC. I'm going to try it again. Uh, but it's, I a think super, this... it's a map game. It's like yes. one of the mappiest map games, but it's a very good one of those. So I, I liked it quite a bit. I don't know if I you know loved it, but this, you know, it looks like a much prettier version of that, and that's great. I think that is, this is the second one only, so I think that's what a lot of people are going to be expecting a one. Even like that underwater stuff with just all the colors and almost the fluorescence and stuff. It looks uh, very pretty, you know, and then at the end, he, they basically fought a giant robot oliphant from Return of the King, right? It's like, yeah, mm -hmm. that's great. It's funny because we just watched the uh, the reveal for Horizon 1 from uh, E3 2015, remember? Yep. We did one of our E3 rewinds, so yep. I was kind of like thinking about that the whole time. I was like, yeah, there's a pretty big difference between what that looked like and what this looks like. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, this is one of those games that is cross-gen. It's going to run on PS4. I I'm not really worried that's about crazy. that. I, I'm not worried about that because I'd like this team can uh, they yeah. did make Horizon One work and this does look better. It does look like it's definitely running on a PS5, uh, but when they downscale it to like you know 30 frames per second or whatever and you know lower the resolution, uh, most of those uh, the, most of like the tech features should still work. I expect. Do you, do you think we're going to start hearing some more more people kind of ups, not upset about that, but maybe so once Ratchet Clay comes out and looks amazing in it takes advantage of the playstation 5 in some ways that it couldn't have if it was also a playstation 4 game i wonder if people are going to start being a little annoyed about that philosophy of no these games are coming to playstation 4 also yeah i i wonder i bet like um god of war ragnarok might not run on it might not be on ps4 and uh if they people look at that and for some reason it has features that weren't in horizon and it's like man that it obviously should have supported this stuff why didn't it people might say stuff then but i think horizon's going to hold up really well and it'll be it'll be difficult to point to to failings of that game because it was held back by ps4 but we'll have to wait and see i'm not sure i, I don't know I, to me the game looks it looks beautiful but That's it also right. looks it looks really fun uh the, mm -hmm. the the grappling hook stuff the the you know the hang glider stuff that they obviously were just like hey we just played zelda 2 so we definitely need this um i'm like that hey i'm gonna use that stuff to navigate this world and explore I, I know it in you a more open zelda way 2 as in zelda also but i i think it, i'd like to see a horizon that was like really <laughs> inspired by the adventures of link yes zelda so, that would be it's like very to fun. the action combat that's where it's at <laughs> very confusing where to go next yeah yeah I, yeah you need a guide which mm -hmm. you know if you have the guide that gives because it's a lot more fun it's like yeah just do what this online says don't wonder uh, uh i i so i guess you, you know if you had to put a bet on it this game comes out 2021 or 2022 i i still think 2021 i think there's going to be a lot of pressure because you know well so my my old thinking is like well they have to have a big fall game for the playstation 5 but even as i say that i was like well do they i mean they're all selling out anyways and there's gonna be shortages anyway so why do you need a big fall release? Like that was the thing about Halo Infinite, right? Where it's like, well, they need to have Halo Infinite at launch to move systems. They moved all the systems anyways. Yeah. So it's hard to say, but it, I don't know. If you go from, you know, in a week or so, we're getting Ratchet. Can you really go more than six months before the next big one right. from them? It People might start getting a little anxious. You might start losing goodwill and, and, and things like that. So I, you know, yes, 2021, I think it's more likely. 
Yeah, I, and I, I think it's 2021, and I think the um, they, they've never said 2021 for this game is one of the things. is is kind of the big thing here. I think uh, there was some point where sony said this game was targeted for the second half of 2021 okay actually uh i saw that when i was writing my story i don't know what that when that was i don't know if it was like an earnings report or what N nothing super big okay. but they said something like that at some point okay well then i i, I but i do think this is 21 in 20, 2021 i would make that bet um I, I think they'll get it out i think it'll be fine i think this team's competent and knew what they were doing and uh and it'll be just fine. So uh, I guess we'll find out soon, though. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I, you know, maybe this is maybe this is early 2022, and they know that they have things like Far Cry and Battlefield and Call of Duty that people can play in PlayStation Five during the actual holiday, right? Yeah, that, that's true. And uh, you know, uh, Ratchet and Clank is going to be probably a pretty big game. It, the, the, th the issue with that is it's pro it seems like it's going to be a game that you play and then you're done, right? It's not going to, I mean, um, well, yeah, um, I bet a lot of people want to 100% it, yes. uh, which, you know, is maybe another like five hours on top of beating it. So sure, it's not going to be, but I mean, that's what a lot of these things are really like, that's what God of War is. It, it's a bit bigger. Sure. That's true. That's true. But that's what that's, what, that's you know. Although, I mean, we know that's that what they said, they, they want to make more live service games, right? And I've been right. thinking about that a lot. I don't know if I'm skipping ahead in your rundown. No, we can get to been, that. Yeah, I've been wondering, like, what does that mean? Like, who is making those? Because, you know, do you, you, you have Naughty Dog? That's your premier studio. And if this is something you really care about, then, oh, I have Naughty Dog do that. But do you really want Naughty Dog making live service games instead of just, you know, working on your big, you know, like, quadruple A uh, thingamajigs? And, you know, Santa Monica seems to be busy. Insomniac seems to have two franchises working on it. It's like, is it is this what Bend is doing now? Who's working on the live service games, Jeff? Is, I'm, I'm asking you a question. Yeah, so, uh, like, I think the way they worded it uh, suggested they they mean one of their the teams that they own. Uh, but uh, it, it's a possible that when they say first party, it means first party publishing deals. And they did make that a uh, deal with that. I, I'm going to forget the name of the studio, but it was a recent deal that they announced that they said they're going to uh, work with basically former Bungie developers to make a, a multiplayer game for the PlayStation. Okay. Uh, and they're going to publish that as a PlayStation Studios game, just like they did with Returnal and Housemark. Right. Um, so maybe that's what they mean. Maybe they have to bring in these external studios to make these games and they See, just this... publish them themselves. This isn't anything new. They've done stuff like this before, like with, you know, uh, Jaffe's drawn to death thing, right? That was, you know, we, we, it's weird because everybody's getting back to this whole, oh, we need live service games and we need to, you know, uh, get our franchises onto mobile. Like we, we we went through this, I feel like five years ago and none of it really stuck except for <laughs> like, you know, the big mobile games are still the big mobile games and the big PC hits often have nothing to do with other franchises in terms of like live service, except for, Call of Duty, but Call of Duty is such a big hit. Everybody's looking at that and thinking we can do that with with whatever our franchises are. Yeah. So, so what we're speaking to here is uh, Sony released a, a released a report for investors, and uh, the byline on it was is Jim Ryan. So Jim Ryan wrote wrote this report for investors, basically saying like, here's the state of the of the business. Here's what's going on with us. And some of the things said like, oh, Uncharted Four is like one of the games we're considering for to port to PC next, and that was like the big headline for everybody because like, oh man, another PlayStation Four big big exclusive game coming to PC, uh, and this is the one that's happening after Days Gone. It seems like Sony's no, not come out and said that. That's wrong and also jim ryan did put his name to it so i think you can kind of say yeah this is what's going to happen next but then they you know they did say things like here's where we expect to see growth and that growth is going to come from putting more games on pc and putting more games on mobile and then these live service games made by our first party made, made, made first these first party live service games whoever ends up making them uh, and those games will come to playstation and other platforms is what they said so uh i, I think that you're right that this is something they've tried before, but they did, I think, make a deliberate choice to stop trying to do these things. And I think um, one of the issues was is they didn't want to just make these games for PlayStation, and that they were they were considering like we're, if the games we make just release on on PS4, and live service games released on just one platform don't make a lot of sense. So we're going to stop doing that. And now they're like, well, we're releasing games on PC, and and, and we're considering mo mobile, uh, you know, as a, as a more viable platform maybe we should get back to making live service games and though that like trifecta of playstation pc and mobile could make those work um but i i, I guess we'll have to wait and see actually what it looks like and i don't think it's going to be um drawn to death too though uh unless unless, <laughs> unless no. that's what you think you know yeah <laughs> no well, that, I, I mean i guess that is the thing right 
uh, that that's the strategy that did work for Activision Blizzard was just getting Call of Duty on something, and we know that's what Ubisoft's going to just try to do now with uh, with the division. So, you know, are they going to try to make like an Uncharted Battle Royale something or, or what right. have you? It it's, seems like it won't work if it's just you know here's uh, another separate thing like destruction derby super all stars or mm -hmm. you know or what have you um i don't know there are things they could bring back though you could bring back socom you could bring back mag a massive action game <laughs> right so i i feel like our podcast talks about mag more than the normal <laughs> gaming podcast <laughs> i've never played a second of mag me in neither. my life me neither i i i wanted to try it i never did uh I think SOCOM, I don't, but I think like games like Warhawk or Starhawk, those games aren't going to come back. It'll be something like no. SOCOM. Um, SOCOM and, would make the most sense, right? Like, it's the one like people SOCOM. ask about it the most. I know that, like, people ask yeah. me about SOCOM all the time. And I'm like, I, I don't know. I hope so. I, I, you know, for so your why sake. Why not? I don't know how well suited that is to like a, a, a bigger online experience like a Battle Royale, but you know, it can make something work. Oh no! In the Discord, apparently Jason Wilson, our editor, uh, just fell for the Chokam. Uh, he asked, the, so someone's like, "Hey, something's happening with Chokama. Jeff, do you know what that is?" And I could tell what this was going to be, so I said, "Hey, maybe ask uh, uh, J Jason or Mike." And Jason fell for it. So Chokama. Oh man, I'm so glad I saw it, and I was about to ask. I was like, "What the heck are you talking?" I was going to be like, "I don't know what you're talking about." I never so should have said it, anything, but I was uh, lazy. Yeah, uh, another one that we might get asked, Mike, is uh, Sawcon. Like it looks like like a saw conference, um, and so you're supposed to say, "Hey, what's sock on?" And then someone says, "Sock on." Uh, yeah, yep. So, oh man, I think I fell for that already once. Oh boy. Okay. I, See, I, I don't think I knew though. It happened. We, uh, I just we are the biggest group of fools you're ever going to find on the internet. So just keep it coming, everybody. Keep yes. it coming. Um, all right. So we talked about Horizon. We talked about that Sony investor report. Uh, I guess the other thing from that Sony investor report is God of War Ragnarok. Probably called God of War Ragnarok. <laughs> yes. I mean that. <laughs> I remember, I think I remember when they quote unquote announced it and I wrote God of War Ragnar. I had a lot of people like, that's not actually the name yet. I know. And it's I was so just, weird. I wanted to be like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure, it's it, not. Uh, it, it'll be weird now if it's not God of War Ragnarok. It seems like kind of a silly thing to like, well, it's a, you've, like, if, you, if that's not going to be the name, you've had months now, like more than a year, I think, uh, of like people saying that's the name and like building up that that marketing uh, why would you go back on well, that we know that if you do anything norse themed for a game and you have a subtitle it's legally obligated to either be uh ragnarok or valhalla those yeah. are your only <laughs> two choices so uh, there, well there you go. Well, the, the other thing from this though is the entire uh, force coming to pc which is we, i think we, pretty interesting we talked about that a little bit but yeah like uh i mean i think that makes the most sense i was kind of thinking maybe spider-man but maybe it's still too early for that because that was right well it's getting pretty close 2018 it's, or 2021 but I, I think now that this happened this the, the floodgates are completely open right because first you did it with like these kind of like games that like like days gone right first for horizon one there's always like a caveat of why they might do this for horizon one knows well they want more people to play it because the first sequel is coming out then days gone it's like well it wasn't a giant hit so now we can make some more money off this now it's just we're bringing one of our you know biggest franchises and biggest games from PlayStation 4 to PC just because we know that this actually does work now. So I think it's interesting for that. Is it going to have the multiplayer? It's not, right? I don't know. Uh, probably not because I think what they would do instead is uh, try to push that audience towards Factions multiplayer and maybe release Factions on on PC at the same time, but I don't know. That's just me speculating. Uh, and and uh, real quick, Jesse and Chat did point out that um, that God of War Ragnarok thing is probably someone on the on the analyst team at at Sony just Google image searching and finding that logo right. and putting it in there. Which of course, yeah, that's the, the person that person actually. I think putting it actually did get updated with like yeah. just a normal God, but but I so. still it's still it's probably going to be called God of War Ragnarok. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, so that, that, that's sort of the Sony stuff. Uh, Mike, tell me what happened with Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic the Hedgehog. He had a Sonic Direct, basically, right? Sonic Central. Yeah. Um, so three big things here, although it was very amusing to see how they added Sonic into the realistic Olympics game, and it's just like a guy in a mascot suit. It's and so that's good. kind of incredible. It's so good. It's the best thing I've ever seen. I don't know. I, like every time I look at <laughs> it, I, I feel so happy. And I mean, you like you say, it's a man in a like people need to visualize this. Go Google image search this yes. if you haven't it seen it hilarious. yet. Uh, it's Sonic at the Olympics and not the Mario game. Uh, just Sonic Olympics, whatever. Uh, and it's really just a, a man in a mascot suit. 
running next to human beings it's the best that's the video game uh i can't wait to play this mike i'm so excited but yeah uh, <laughs> what else did they have so uh first big thing sonic colors is getting remastered sonic colors was one of the few sonic games that was like good during that dark age of sonic around 2010 right so this is like in the midst of like that sonic 06 sonic unleashed era but uh people liked it but it was also stuck on the wii and it was you know a, a, one of those like 3d models on a 2d playing game and on the wii it looked very ugly so mm -hmm. it's great that this is going to be on modern platforms it'll be in h it's, it's weird you have to be like wow this game's gonna be in hd that's great this game's gonna be in hd so it's going to look much better i'm curious to see how how it does hold up i, I know for me personally even like the the better sonic games from that era like this and uh uh generations i still don't like as much as like the original 2d stuff or sonic mania mm -hmm. but i'll be curious to give it a shot uh we're getting another sonic compilation sonic origins uh so sonic one two three and knuckles and sonic cd so mildly bog standard we've, we've gotten these kind of things before it's a little unusual to have cd in there as well so yeah. so that's nice i mean you know there's a lot more sonic games they could have added to it and a lot of sonic games are already like available on these platforms in like the genesis collection or just via sega ages releases but it's still it's going to be nice to have them all together and i'm sure it's not going to cost very much then we got the teaser for the next like sonic team sonic games going to come out in 2022 uh it's it's probably called sonic rangers uh, aside from everything else floating around right. there i have good reason to believe that's the name of this game uh so and we didn't see much except like sonic was running through a forest and you know he looked good and uh it was a cg trailer and he made a symbol mm -hmm. so we'll see I, like it, every time there's these teasers i want to get excited but like sonic team's track record has has not been fantastic like i said sonic generations was good but then they did sonic and lost world which was bad and then sonic forces was like uninspired and kind of bland and yeah there was no sonic mania 2 which is a little disappointing but do you think one of those is there. ever going to happen now because i'm worried it's they're just never going to follow up on sonic uh, mania. maybe not i don't know why not but i mean like like they still have christian white like christian white must be doing something right i don't, I don't, I guess, know, I'm I don't know on him right yeah. so i don't know what he's doing but you, it would be weird like why not like you you do you have those guys i'm sure they would want to make a sequel right uh and you know last time in the one year we had mania 2 and sonic forces and maybe they were looking at that and saying i think maybe we cannibalize ourselves there maybe we need to keep these two things separated a bit yeah so maybe what we have to wait until after uh sonic rangers comes out and then we'll see sonic mania 2 i don't know there's okay. also like it was great was somebody like found a thing from like january where some guy said i play tested a new sonic game called sonic rangers and it sucked <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's it's good that my expectations are already pretty low right and, and who knows maybe they'll fix it up but uh the way that they describe that game um and yeah it sounds like another bad 3d sonic game so good well, luck with that yeah it, it i wish they could figure it out but the problem is you know, there, there's never even been that good of a foundation for 3D Sonic games. They right. kind of had something with Sonic Adventure 1, and then all attempts to improve that have never really worked out very well. And whenever they even try to, like, reinvent it, like, Sonic and the Lost World was so deflating to me, because, like, oh, it looks like they maybe got this figured out, because it's, like, 3D, but it's a bit more linear, and, like, that should work for Sonic. And then that didn't work. And I was like, man, how can this be done? There's that fan game. It's called Sonic something something two. I don't know what, and it's like a sequel to a real like bad, not bad, but like real cheap Sonic fan game. But the sequel is a 3D game with like 2D aesthetics. It kind of looks like that um that 3D platform with the Demon Girl that's coming out. Uh, I forget the name of that. That was supposed to be good. So yeah. maybe I'll just play that. Here's the thing: Why don't they make the 3D Sonic games look more like the 2D Sonic games from the Genesis? Wouldn't that be better than just like putting uh, them in a real city? So, I mean, it, it's weird, but there are a lot of people who love that weird ass like Dreamcast era beyond. Okay, Sonic yeah, I shit. know there are a lot like, of people like, with bad taste, yeah. Mike. I know yeah. that, but why does it say it just stand up? These people, I know, man. And apparently, I so yeah, Sonic Robo Blast Two is the game I'm thinking of. The fan game, thank you, okay. Pilot. But um, I mean, apparently, Sonic Team absolutely loves that shit too, right? Because even when things were like bad for that franchise, they would they refused to like leave that behind. Mm -hmm. Like when they made Sonic Generations, they still like. Yeah, Silver the Hedgehog's still gonna be in it. Don't worry. So I mean, 
I, I don't know. I don't know. It seems obvious to me that, that yeah, you should just kind of go back to basics. And, like, they had Sonic Mania do that, but it was always kind of clear, like, to be clear, we're still making the shitty Sonic games. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't know. I just, I th we got a couple of chats that got held by the bot, and I'll say the one that uh, our, our mod Nick Turbo let through was uh, from Jesse. Sonic's human girlfriend in 06 shows how much he likes to fuck. Just to show people, this is what gets let through. Yes. This is what our chat, this is what we want in our chat. I was More say, that, that better get let through. That's yeah, good. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I mean, Sonic, Sonic 06, for as much shit as it gets, like, I, I, I will never feel sorry for it. I will never, like, entertain the idea that, ah, oh, people are unfair to that game. Like, it is no. actually that bad, so... <laughs> it's I, okay, so great games, whatever. Mike, all I care about is the fashion. Uh, is it, <laughs> Your bling? Is my yeah? Give me my bling. That's the that Sonic jewelry. The jewelry. The Sonic jewelry. Um, if anyone's seen uh, what's that Adam Sandler movie that came out uh, last year where he had the jewel encrusted Furby or whatever, it looked exactly <laughs> like that. Um, yes. These things are I incredible. I bet these will be very popular. I bet yeah. these will make them good money. Uh, yeah, and then um, I don't know if you mentioned it, but Dr. Sonic in the Two Point Hospital game, um, that is a very funny idea to me as yeah, well. Just good. going to the hospital, saying, Doctor, there's something wrong with me, and sitting across the desk and seeing Sonic on the other side. It's just a very good image. It's all, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. They're doing they, some they, fun they, stuff they, with Sonic. They're doing fun stuff, and they uh, a lot of people there seem to get it. One of those people isn't Sonic Team is the issue, really. Like, that's the concern. It's like the people who make the big mainline Sonic games aren't yeah. very good. <laughs> so, uh, but we'll see. You know, maybe maybe, maybe Sonic Rangers will, will be will be good. Uncut Gems. Thank you, chat. I really appreciate that. It's like, like five people in chat. Uncut Gems. Uncut Gems. Thank you so much. I, yeah, I forgot um, completely. I never saw it. All right, Mike. And any anything else for Sonic? I, I guess like this is. I'm disappointed there wasn't a Sonic Mania. I don't have high expectations for Sonic Rangers, and this is kind of where I expected to be after this Sonic event. I guess I I think maybe yeah. I hope to see Sonic Mania too, but oh, oh well. I think a lot of people are uh, like the Sonic fans are excited for Sonic Colors remastered. I think you know that is nice. I mean, I remember the E3 where they had they announced Sonic Four and Sonic Colors, and everyone's like, oh wow, Sonic Four, they're giving. The oh Mega God. Man 9 treatment, to, and that Sonic 4 was just hot garbage. It was, it was so like, bad. Actually, Sonic Colors is much better than that. So, you know, like, Sonic Team does, it, it has an in like, to get I'm close. sorry, wait, yes. real, real quick. You mean Sonic 4 Episode 1, please. Oh it's an episodic God. game, and we're going to get many, many more. Please, that Mike, was, get it right. I reviewed Sonic 4 Episode 2 and gave it a bad score because, of course, and that was the most uh, like angry tweets and hate mail I ever got was for saying Sonic 4 Episode 2 was bad when no one else had played it. It was incredible. And it was like, uh, I got, like the Sonic fans, they are a, they're a special breed. Mm -hmm. Nope. And I mean, I, I say that as somebody who like, you know, is one and really was one as a, as a kid. But there is a big separation from like the Genesis era Sonic fans like me and then the people who played Sonic Heroes and thought that was very good. Yeah, and you call them a special breed, and just saying the word breed around breed. them is going to yeah, yes. gonna, yeah, gonna get them right. all. Yeah, uh, yeah be careful. Yeah. I love you, Sonic fans. You, you guys keep showing up. Eventually, you'll get another good game, I, I'm sure. Um, all right, Dragon Quest event, Mike. Man, it was a good yeah. week for you, huh? A lot of stuff yeah, happened. Yeah, all these things that I care about. That's now, nice. Now, here, here's the thing. That happened late on Wednesday night, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of people missed this, and yet I think there was some really cool stuff that came here. Uh, I think... There was no like okay, so they announced Dragon Quest 12. This is the thing that we thought they might do, but we didn't get a lot of info about it. No like real trailer, yeah. just a tease of the title. Um, and so I think not having Dragon Quest 12 as like a trailer that people can go watch, people mostly glanced over this. But there is a, a another game, Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D, like a remake that looks fantastic. Tell me it what looks, this is. Right. So you know, Square Enix remakes its 8-bit, 16-bit RPGs a lot, and they're often awful like super ugly gross like what they did to Final Fantasy 6 somebody should have actually gone to jail for that <laughs> I, I, I like absolutely like I'm not even joking that should have been a crime so it, it's always kind of deflating that stuff but this one is a remake of Dragon Quest 3 which is the best 8-bit uh, RPG anybody made uh, so it's for the NES and the Famicom and it's been like remade before it was remade for Game Boy Color in a popular version actually like you can play it on Switch right now and it's like a pretty ugly port that looks kind of like those Final Fantasy things, where it's just like, like really flat, uh, not, like not really pixels, just like weird, ugly 2D art. And you know the game is so good, I played it that way. It was fine. This is them just taking the Octopath Traveler 
style where it, you know you have like these detailed 2d sprites that are clear still clearly sprites and then they're in these like really kind of diorama-esque worlds it looks fan Fantastic. I want them to do this to all of their like classic games, except for maybe Final Fantasy VI and like Chrono Trigger, because I think those two actually look fine the way they are. But even still, I wouldn't be mad if they did this. It's certainly better than what they did. But for like Final Fantasy IV and Final Fantasy V and the other Dragon Quest games, like absolutely, please. This yes. looks great. And it's just so encouraging to see, oh, they're finally like really like putting effort into making one of these remakes like look really distinct and cool and interesting and yeah dragon quest 3 is a great game so i think a lot of people will be excited to have this excuse to try it out so yeah that, that's really exciting yeah i i think um the, it just took him a long time to realize like this was an option uh yeah. you, do, you don't have to fully like, make everything 3d um you know what, what was the secret of mana trial mana which what, what's the, the one that sec, they it was the set the second one secret of mana was the one well they did it first with the first one and the, you know that, they, that was remaking a game boy game so they made like you know 3d art for it whatever but then when they did it for a secret of mana and they replaced gorgeous 2d sprites with just low fidelity uh 3d models right that was pretty rough that was ugly right so it's like it, it, but it's like we still really like the way 2d games look and but if you want to make them look modern this octopath you know in the middle option of really distinct looking 2d characters in this dioramic uh 3d world uh, it works and it, it like octopath traveler sold on the strength of its look and applying that to a bunch of different remakes is gonna it's yeah it is definitely gonna help sell these games i think uh and yeah and it, it seems like it's budget friendly it seems like they are sticking to this hd 2d brand because they can pump these games out and get them out there and not have to do a ton of a ton of ton of work and yeah i'm I'm very excited. So uh, yeah, and, and they, they basically said on the stream that like they'll probably do it for at least Dragon Quest one and two after three. And they basically said they did three first because it's better. It's the best one of those three. Right. So so why not? But three, even Dragon Quest four was actually an NES game. So that'd be fantastic if they did it for that. I'd even like that more than than for one and two. But even um, you know, so even Dragon Quest twelve though, there was some things they talked about. We mostly just got a logo. There were some hints that like, oh, this one might be darker. I think some people are like freaking out about that a little bit too yeah. much like a darker dragon quest like I, I don't think we should expect it to be dark souls or, no <laughs> or you know the last of us all of a sudden like you know like dragon quest 5 your you know your main character uh it becomes a slave for 10 years at one point right so like that's dark so maybe something like that happened it's still going to have like the dragon ball z art and stuff like that mm -hmm. and maybe it'll be relatively i'm sure it'll be darker than dragon quest 11 which even then there was like some you know, dark quote unquote things that happened there so i i, I want to get too worried about that and they, they said something like they're tinkering with the battle system which is sacrilege for a lot of people again who knows to what degree that means i'm sure right. it's still going to be a you know jrpg turn-based battle system I, i'm not sure what they would really uh mess with but, uh, especially after dragon quest 11 seems to have just hit its stride so right. hard with so many people in so many different regions um it, it seemed yeah it seems like the, the franchise is in its strongest point in a very long time especially it would be worldwide. a mistake to so yeah it'd be a mistake to after dragon quest 11 like suddenly shift dramatically i don't know right. why you would need to do that when you really could and you haven't you haven't up one. to this point so why now all of a sudden yeah so it's right. probably gonna I mean, be yeah it's gonna There's be mostly a like, dragon quest game yeah, I mean, there's been slight like variations between like sure. some of them are a bit more plot focused. Some of them will have a job system. Some of them will be like you can tame monsters. And then there's Dragon Quest X, which they talked about here, which is an MMO that never came out. The other interesting thing from this event is that they're making an offline version of Dragon Quest X, which uh, I think right. is really interesting because a lot of you know this in Final Fantasy they have numbered entries that are online games, and you, I always think about like man, thirty years from now. When we're going to be like, here's like the first 20 Final Fantasy games, one collection. Like, what do you do about Final Fantasy 11, Final Fantasy 14? And maybe someday you just like say, hey, look, we're taking the story from that game and the characters and we turned it into a separate single player RPG. So I think that's interesting. I wonder if we're going to ever see that for at least drag or uh, Final Fantasy 11. Now, what they showed looked but ugly for Dragon mm -hmm. Quest, especially after seeing what they did with Dragon Quest uh, 3 later. But still, it, it, that's an interesting idea. Yes, I I uh, I agree. Um, I, real quick, I think we're gonna for the podcast listeners, we're gonna go to a quick break, uh, and we'll be right back. 
all right everyone on youtube uh thank you for listening uh we got a, a 150 likes and almost 700 people watching if you're if you're watching go ahead and hit that like button uh see if we can I want to see if, like, around E3, if we could break a 1,000 people watching at some is point. This, is this where an ad is playing? Is that why we suddenly did a break? You didn't tell me this was happening. Yeah, I keep forgetting to tell you about these things, Mike, and I apologize for that. I, I was like, what's wrong? Something's wrong. Something's breaking. His I, kids are on fire. No, well, they probably are, but, but you know, we're not going to do anything. Who could do sure. anything about that, right? Uh, but, uh, yeah, we're, an ad's playing here, and uh, I keep forgetting, like, I need to do this uh, so that it's not weird when people are listening to the podcast and suddenly an ad starts. Um yeah okay uh we can get back into it now all right mike uh D dying light 2 any interest in that or should i just kind of say that it has a release date and that i think it looks okay that will suffice oh it's coming out the day before my birthday that's interesting i should have just led with that i should have led with that and yes. that would have got you well out. you have blessings birthday on your game as you even though it's just it's right around mine so you know no, i know I, you hate me no, but you don't I, have to be so public about it i don't it. have I, if i have blessings i don't remember, i have imran imran's birthday oh so, my gosh yeah. well now i feel awful i thought yeah. i had blessings I, I just it, I just glanced and saw it wasn't me. It was mad. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but I, I'm not gonna put your birthday on there, Mike. You can go to hell. Uh, oh, fair enough. Well, I don't deserve it now. Uh, I think Dying Light Two is uh, exciting. It, there was a lot of people watching this. People really like Dying Light One. People have still been playing it. Uh, it's one of those open world games that has like a lot of the, a lot of content, but it's also just it's the kind of thing you could play for a long time because it has co op and it works really well. And so there's high hopes for Dying Light Two. Uh, they're still making like big promises about the way that you're going to be able, be able to interact with the world with your with your choices. You're going to make choices, and they're like, "Oh, this, it's going to be like a completely different game based on what you're what you decide to do." And that stuff, I'm still like, "Is it going to really be a completely different game, or are the flags on the building going to be a different color of the faction I went with? Is that is that how it's going to be? Is it so, going to be like Mass Effect Three, where we get a different color yeah. beam at the end based on our choices? Right, and it's like. You know, if that's what it is, just don't build it up. Like, I'm fine with, like, if it's, like, that's what the game is and there's other fun stuff to do in there and it's still a good game, that's fine. But uh, building it up as finally delivering on this thing that we, you know, we always want in games um, and then coming up short is always a problem. But I guess, you know, I'm I'm skeptical because of that. But I still think, the, like, the core park parkour stuff and fighting zombies, even I mean, though they're I, not I, called zombies. I have to yeah. admit, I never played Dying Light, even though... Like, I, I should like it because I love Mirror's Edge, right? But I just, that was that point where I was really sick of zombie games, which I never, I'm not right, a big well, zombie guy to begin you're with. Right. Now my kids are on fire. I'll be right back. Hang on. Potty time. <laughs> let's go. Man, let's, let's listen in. Oh, no, he's being too quiet. Jeff, I want to know. Now I have to play on my thing instead. That was just that was just me jamming. That was nothing. If you that was just all right up there. That's right. We'll play. We'll play a classic. Now we can play it significantly lower. Am I struggling with the D? <laughs> what did I just put? I am struggling with the D. Oh no. <laughs> oh, oh, Jeff missed out on that one. All right. I, did, I am not struggling with the D. We can play a D just fine. See, it's all about finger strength to get the D. <laughs> Where's Jeff? <laughs> Jeff, help! <laughs> I can do this. 
There's a D. <laughs> Shit. All right. So you're still, we're still learning this thing. It's big. It's girthy. <laughs> it's thick. I heard Jeff giggling. Yeah, whenever I come back, I'm always like interested to see what you're doing. So yeah. Oh, uh, you missed it. I said, yeah. Y'all let you. Oh, you got split. caught. Oh my god, the chat. Okay, everyone, tell me what happened. <laughs> All right. Well, I was playing. I was uh, at first. I played on my small flute thing uh -huh. recorder that I played on the big one, and I was struggling with the D notes. And at some point, uh, what, did I, what did I say? I, was I, was, I said I was struggling with the D. <laughs> then I started laughing at myself a lot. <laughs> I started screaming at you for help. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm definitely going to include that in the podcast version. So, uh, all right. Um, oh, man, that's good stuff. Okay. My, <laughs> Uh, my, but look my, how much I entertain the people I know, while you're the peop gone. The people and seem you very. Banish me? They seem very delighted. No, no, you're never getting banished again, Mike. You're not going That's anywhere. Right. That's All right. right. Damn right. Okay, so we, we have more news. Let's get through this. Um, okay. Uh, Dying Light Two coming out December seventh. I, I, I'm excited. We'll see. Um, you know, and while I'm skeptical, I'm still going to give the, the game a shot. Uh, MPD happened. The industry was down two uh, percent, but that is you know year over year. But that's really good considering that April twenty twenty one was the or twenty twenty excuse me was the first full month of pandemic spending on games, mm -hmm. and so only dropping two percent is really impressive. And that means right. momentum so is being maintained. We should start. Yeah, we should stop seeing these giant leaps compared to non COVID months right. from the previous year. So yeah, makes sense. Yes, exactly. And it's like, yeah, maintaining that, that momentum. And like last uh, April was Final Fantasy seven remake and. Uh, Animal Crossing uh, was still going strong. Yes, exactly. And so, uh, and there were some, there were some new games uh, here. I, I have the list. Let's go ahead and just read the, the top ten here. From this is from last year. Or from this year. This is from this year. So, uh, we have at number ten. It was Mario Kart Eight, of course. Uh, then nine. It takes two. Eight that, is not, what, eight takes two. Like jumped up from last month. Was that yes. just because it came out last the previous month? Is that a word of mouth thing? Like what's that about? I think it's a combination of things. I think it came out late in the in the month of uh, March, and then or maybe even like early April, and so it was like it was just maybe a couple days. But I think word of mouth really did that thing well. It sold also very well on Xbox compared to PlayStation, and that, that might really? just be yeah. And I think the audiences there just might be um, more people play online multiplayer games on microsoft i think or you know in terms of like um percentage of the population of those of those uh boxes or whatever um oh god my, now my phone's ringing <laughs> you're doing? a mess yeah i am don't make me bust out the d again <laughs> oh no mike don't bust out the d again <laughs> all right there we go it was uh it was from scam likely i don't i've never even met that person he, <laughs> oh, he calls me friend. all the time yeah he calls me all the time <laughs> i don't know what he wants um why do you okay. have mario kart playing in your background right now speaking of mario kart is, is this your way of teasing people about mario kart 9 i just want to say it before other people do no it's not i, I just uh, <laughs> it, i was just like uh, trying to find a uh, ultra widescreen uh version of a mario game to see if like emulators had done that and mario kart was one i'm like oh that looks cool uh, on, on the 32 by 9 it screen. Does look nice. for some reason at first when i saw it i was like oh why does he have uh Crash Nitro Kart or whatever. Oh my god! Back. Wow! I don't How know dare you? Crash Team Racing. I don't know why that's where my mind went. It was probably just a Donkey Kong level, I bet. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, Returnal was number eight. Uh, Monster Hunter Rise at seven. Mortal Kombat Eleven number six. Um, Near Replicant was number five. Outriders at number four after being number three the month before. Not bad for Outriders. Yeah. Uh, that's a, a game new... people keep or like continue to be mad about. Like. Apparently, its issues haven't really been fixed yet, and people right. like, oh, people seem mad. Still, still seems to be selling pretty well for, especially for kind of a double A game. Like yeah, it's game in that between people, that it's a double A plus. Yeah, a, a game that people didn't have high expectations for, and then kind of just said like, "Oh yeah, I'm enjoying playing that," and that was like the highest praise it got. Still selling pretty well for something like that. Mm. Um, new Pokemon Snap at number three. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War number two and MLB The Show number one. MLB The Show having its best 
debut month ever because it's on more systems like mm -hmm. yeah not surprising uh but the new, the new games on this list are mlb new pokemon snap near replicant and returnal um i think i think returnal kind of did i think it's pretty good for a P ps5 exclusive uh game that's a new ip uh to sell right. the like it so it's physical and digital sales outsold just the physical sales for mario kart 8 but kind of like using mario kart 8 as a barometer like mario kart 8 sold 10 million copies in 20 in 2020 right. or something like that so that's like uh, if you're above that you're doing pretty well we, we should not compare this to you know spider-man or, or russian clan no. although uh, man it would have sold so much more if you didn't give it a three out of five i know and i i'm sorry I'm, all those people are going to lose their jobs when they say they're going to make another yeah. one of those and make it even better uh make an even bigger game in the future is actually what they said recently how smart hmm. um yeah, that, that, that's MPD. I, I think it's mostly the, the big news for me was, oh, okay, there wasn't a huge drop off from April 2020. The, the hope was that all these people buying hardware and buying games in 2020 because of the pandemic weren't going to suddenly be like, okay, I can go back outside again. I'm never going to touch games again. Right. They are probably going to play fewer games than they did in 2020, but then they do own the hardware now. And so they probably will still buy games here or there. And so if the, if the comparison does just drop off a few percentage points, but those people still show up now and again to buy games, that's overall really good for the industry. And that seems to be what we've seen so far. We'll see how that goes over the next few months. Um, couple, just three more stories. Uh, this is a weird one. Randy Pitchford got on Twitter yesterday. Randy Pitchford, the CEO of Gearbox, the company that makes Borderlands, uh, said Borderlands 3, um, he, he, here's just the quote that I wrote down. And this was from Twitter. For certification, we have been required by the publisher to remove cross-play support for PlayStation consoles. Um, this seems like, a, I don't, I, I hesitate to call it diplomatic because hey, Randy Pitchford seems like one of the least diplomatic people on the face of the planet. Um, but it it's seems strategic. like a, a strategic way of saying, uh, Sony, for some reason, Sony is causing problems and the publisher doesn't want to deal with well, them. So we can't, we know that so, we know that we know because of the Apple trial yes, thing we that do. Sony charges for cross play. And it seems like the publisher just doesn't want to pay entertain for them. It. I'll be back in 30 seconds. All right. Yeah. So the publisher does it. God, I'm not your monkey, Jeff. So yes, the publisher just doesn't want to pay for that, so they're they're stuck with uh, you know what can any pitcher do? He's clearly trying to strong arm somebody. He's not he's not gonna be able to strong arm Sony from not charging them. So I almost feel like if anything, he's trying to guilt the publisher into paying for Sony's fee. Uh, that's what seems uh, most likely to me in the scenario. Okay, all right, guys, I'll give you. I'm going back to the small D. No. <laughs> yes, a small D. Um, okay, well, he's gonna play something for us. I'm excited. Go, Mike. Oh no, now there's now there's like pressure and stuff. Uh -huh. uh, no, I'm taking. I'm, you're, I can't do it when you're watching. <laughs> my my, you my D is my, my D gets shy. Yeah, you can't play with your D while I'm watching. I understand. Yeah, unless I pay. Yeah, uh, that's just normal. There it is. <sighs> oh I'm boy, chrono, I'm trying to do Chrono Cross. Does anyone even watch this show for video there games, is. or is it just a, until we screw up, basically? Whoop. Hmm. One second. Yeah. Shit! <laughs> uh, Valve is making a handheld console, uh, or a handheld gaming, handheld gaming PC. Uh, do you think this is another Steam Machine thing, Mike, or, or what? Well, I mean, they're weird... Like dependence on Linux is gives me like some Steam Machine flashbacks, but this is something that people actually want. Yeah, like I would love to have one of these things just so I could download like some JRPGs that are on like Steam and not on my Switch that now I can play in bed portably, comfortably. Right, like the uh, like Trails of Cold Steel is a good example of that. Like I keep waiting for the earlier games in that series to come to switch so i can play through that franchise right i'm not going to play trails of cold steel one like sitting down here on my computer right for over 40 hours so it'd be great for stuff uh like that and for a bunch of other things and you know let's be honest like i'm sure these things will be heavily moddable and people can put every single rom on the planet on there right so yes uh yeah, I, th I think it's. Uh, I think this would certainly make much more sense than Steam Machines. It seems like something that I absolutely believe this is happening. So I'll be curious to see it. Yeah, and uh, it, I think um, the hesitation people have is that Steam Valve never fully sees these things through. They have a lot of abandoned projects in their past, and I think that it's possible they'll abandon this too, the hardware side of things. 
but I bet the software is the kind of thing where um, all of these Chinese companies that have been making these handheld PCs, there's at least like three or four on the market right now, um, three or four popular ones that are selling. Um, the, the, they're the kind of companies that would be like, oh, Valve made this Steam OS for handheld PCs. Let's just take that and that's what our customers want. We'll just put that on our hardware because we make the money from the hardware and then Valve be like, yeah, we'll make money from selling software. Well, so I think that'll work out well. I do hope though that like, if they're getting into this, I hope they do like release like a, their Steam machine thing, where that was one of the big yeah. problems, right? Was like, there wasn't a Steam machine. There was a bunch of them. And it seemed like, again, like their heart was in the right place with that, but it was just kind of confusing and bad and nobody really understood it. Yep. Uh, and then Mike, there's not going to be a BlizzCon. You wrote this story. What's happening? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of saw this coming. Uh, so we already had a BlizzCon online in what, February. And I was always wondering like, well, were we getting like a normal BlizzCon or any kind of BlizzCon in November when it usually happens? And they said, uh, they said, no, no, we will not be getting that. So, it, and they said because of COVID, I I imagine that they're not too broken up about the prospect of getting to just work on Diablo 4 and Overwatch 2 instead of having to prepare for a BlizzCon and all the presentation stuff that that would entail. I think that they are really, they really want to hunker down and get a lot of work done on those games. And they said they'll probably do uh, another online event early next year again, and there will be some kind of like smaller in-person events component to that which i don't really know what that means so not, not a big surprise but disappointing i like blizzcon uh it's one of the you know events i really do enjoy going to but even then right like there's like forty thousand people at a blizzcon and i know things are you know loosening up here a bit we're starting to get back to normal i don't know if i want to be absolutely jam-packed into a convention center with a bunch of people yet right. in november so yeah all right, uh, we got a bunch of Super Chats. We have some questions uh, from the Discord. Uh, Mike, are you ready to read some Super Chats or should I just do some questions first? I'm ready, I'm, let's right. go. Let's do it. So if you, real quick, if you have a Super, tri super Chat you wanna ask, if you have a question, uh, right now's the, t the time to send it. Mike will read it for you right now. So uh, let's hand it over to Mike. Yeah, from uh, from Kieran Buckley, uh, does Final Fantasy 16 make it out this year? Or next year, I'm starting. I, I I was pretty optimistic before about it being this year. I'm beginning to think no. We'll find out at, at E3. Prob we'll at least find out if it's coming out this year at E3, right? If, yeah. if we don't hear anything about it then, then no. I be, but I'm beginning to think it's like a it's like a 70 30 percent chance here, 70 percent not this year, maybe right. more. What do you I, think? I think it's probably that April 22, 2022 time frame, that time that Final Fantasy VII Remake came out. I think around then would make sense. Maybe. If, even if it was if it was fall next year, even, I wouldn't be Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. surprised. Oh, yeah, yeah, same. But I, I think there's a good chance. I think it's uh, still earlier than we expect. And I think that before next E3, I would still be earlier than I expect. Uh, yeah. Uh, from Jalen001. Great show, guys. Nier Automata's story is amazing. Been playing it better than any other game. Question. All right, now, Jeff, don't get carried away here, but I'm allowing this since, you know, they're, they they did Super Chat. Is The Last Jedi the most disappointing movie in five years? Oh, my God. Okay, listen. Uh, no, it's it's absolutely not. Yeah. I, I, if you're disappointed in it, I, I think it's, um you just don't want don't Star Wars. Don't psychoanalyze a person now for not liking the freaking movie jeff Deep other people who don't like star wars the last jedi are are people who don't want to see the movie look listen i think that the, the best way to look at it is um arthurian legend uh the original star wars movies are are is arthur pulling the thing out the, the sword out of the stone and it's cool and he's a hero and then older arthur and his when he gets older as he moves on things get more complicated for him and he deals with like his wife cheating on him and uh and all these other like internal strife issues and the character becomes more complicated and more interesting and that's what happened with the last jedi and people don't like more complicated and more interesting it's uh it's a fantastic they're just not movie. as smart as you yeah, well, I mean, this is basically what I've been saying about everything, but specifically about the Last Jedi. I think Last Jedi is perfect. Uh, I really do. Um, but but I don't, hey, I don't think it's perfect. I, I, I'm, I know, but I'm, but uh, hey, I'm the weirdo. Not as smart as me. Yeah, I feel almost more alone than anybody in this because I'm I'm like, and you get right. mad at me for saying I'm like, yeah, Last Jedi is fine. <laughs> like I don't I don't feel strongly negatively or positively about it, which seems like the rarest opinion on it. But that's all we're talking about. Last Jedi here, we get Fair it. Enough. It's. You, you do have to admit there is something incredible about how just we're still having this discourse yes, about absolutely. that movie all these years later. 
uh, 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 Kirim. We'll say that. Kirim, Quarim. Quarim, maybe Quarim. Let's go with Quarim. Bloodborne needs a PC port. Do it, Sony. That's got to be on. That's got to be soon, right? Like, I would almost have expected that before Uncharted 4. That would just make yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah, I, I, um, I'm still hopeful for this. I think it's still uh, possible. Um, I, I, I wonder if it's the kind of thing that we just they're waiting uh, to talk about Eldering before they talk about something like this. Uh, but I, I don't know. Uh, Sony, it, it, Sony would be the company probably to talk about it, not not from. Uh, and Sony is probably not going to have a an E3 state of play. If they have a summer state of play, it'll come in like July or something like that, maybe August, um, and maybe they talk about it there. Isn't it incredible how many people think that Sony is just having an E3 show this year? Like yeah. a lot of people don't really understand that that's not happening. And I wonder how many people are actually going to be like, well, you know, once like Nintendo, Microsoft do the thing, they're going to be like, well, we're Sony's thing. And that, <laughs> that's going to be confusing. Like it yep. might be. Yeah, no, you're, you're right. People just are assuming that's what we're going to get because that's what they're used to. And and I guess Sony hasn't explicitly said we're not going to be there, but they they have kind of said that much. And uh, they did their state of play. It was yesterday for Horizon. That's what they're doing. And if they were going to do something else, they would have mentioned it by now. So, yeah, it's weird. Big Smoke asks, Jeff, Project Mara when? Uh, that's a, t a tough one because I think... Um, I, I don't know, probably not until like 2023, but I guess it could maybe the, if it's a smaller project, maybe it comes sooner than that. I guess I don't know what the scope is on that game. I, I always assumed it was going to be like at least another Hellblade in terms of uh, you know time and and the amount of effort that goes into it. And if that's the case, they're very busy on, on Hellblade 2. So uh, I think it's probably still a ways off, maybe 2023, maybe more. Josh Tarpley asks, Mike, Thoughts on Updog? I know what Updog is. You're not going to get me there. <laughs> Jeff gets asked this thoughtful question about a future video game. I got asked about fucking Updog. <laughs> Patrick Dennis, how solidified are the E3 plans for most companies at this point? Um, I think they're pretty solidified, but uh, there's definitely opportunities to shift things up. Um, I think, uh, you know, Microsoft's a good example. Uh, I, I heard Avowed wasn't going to be there. Uh, other people have heard that there's a chance it could still be in there. And I think that it's like, as they assess what the show looks like as a whole, if they're like, well, maybe we should just do an Avowed CG trailer. When we have that asset that we were kind of working on and we weren't going to put in there, maybe we could put, fit it in there. I, I, I don't, like, I, unless I heard Avowed wasn't going to be there, but there's a chance they could try to make that shift and, and, and because it's all online no one's traveling people have time to make these decisions kind of up to the last minute mm -hmm. uh but for the most part most of the companies have already decided exactly what they're going to be showing and now they are mostly talking about like when during the day like they're going to be showing if they're not one of these major companies like microsoft knows when they're going nintendo definitely knows when they're going but if you're like one of these other companies that's supposed to fit between microsoft and nintendo and all these other things so during the day during the e3 stream you're still working with the esa about figuring out exactly what that looks like so uh but for the most part yeah th th this this stuff has been decided for the most part Mattathias asks, Mike and Jeff, what is your favorite Sonic cartoon? Yeah, they did talk about with Sonic Prime a little bit. They didn't show yeah. anything that's going to be the next Sonic cartoon. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm one of those Sonic AM, Sat AM fans, the one that was like a bit more quote unquote serious. The one with Sally Acorn and stuff. Uh, I enjoyed that. Although I did like the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, the goofier one. And that was easier to watch. Like that one was syndicated. So you could just watch it every day on like a local uh, syndication channel. They're both good. There, there's some, some clips from that Sonic Boom show that, like, surprisingly aren't bad. And people say that it was good, which is pretty shocking considering yeah. just how awful that game was. But, uh, Jeff, what is your answer? I, you know, it's surprising. Like, growing up, like, anything video game related was, like, very exciting. Especially, like, if it wasn't on a video game system. I was looking at the TV. Right. I'm like, I'm going to watch this. But for some reason, never Sonic, though. I never watched any of the Sonic shows ever, really. Uh, I would catch them here and there. I, they're on Netflix now. My kids like have like a, a passing interest when they see Sonic the Hedgehog. They're like, oh, for some reason I like this. My brain tells me I like this. So they like want to see Sonic and I'll put them on and they seem okay. But uh, I guess I'll say any of the ones that have Jaleel White, cause I'm a huge Urkel head, Mike, you know this about me. Yes. Well, speaking of that, I think the, like, the third one was Sonic Underground where like Sonic was in a band with a brother and sister, yes. sister that were never in. I never saw that. Cause it just like wasn't on around here, but my nieces start watching it. Cause it, it's on Netflix. So. Yes. That's one of the ones we watch on Netflix. It's weird. Yeah. That's weird. 
so we had, we got a bunch of things here when I was playing on my recorder thingy. We had Cal uh, Cal Hand Fudka literally literally sending money for live music performance. Thank you. Raymond <laughs> Hampton said a Pona song. It was not a Pona song. First, I was just jamming. Then I was trying to play some Lord of the Rings stuff. V Sim CO just says recorder smiley face. Thank you. Josh Tarpley just says D. So great. Uh, and then basement radio arcade podcast says happy Friday, Mike and Jeff. Cheers. Cheers Thank you, Brad. to you too, sir. Juxo9, glad to have you back, Mike. It is nice to be back. Jeff, will Bungie show something on the Destiny expansion or their new IP on E3 week? Uh, I I don't know. I don't th I don't think so cuz I don't know where they would do it. And they're they're not like listed as one of the companies participating, so I I don't know. I don't think so. Brett Bingham, uh, look at the presentation image they released, Jeff. Some things are easier to see than others. I think this is referring to Sony's, right? Yeah, well, could you ask, say that again? My, my kid was asking Look something. at the presentation image they released, Jeff. Some things are easier to see than others. And then there's the emoji of the eye. Uh, maybe they're know. talking. I don't know. Maybe they're talking about the Xbox one because there's like the Starfield thing in there. I, I don't know. Put, just put, oh, uh, you're right. Yeah. Okay. Some people think there's, yeah, maybe you're talking about. Uh, Xbox, huh? Yeah. T T Bucket twenty three. Did you guys see another game releasing on June tenth? It's called uh, Shikari, a colorful tale, which is like a classic Zelda game turned into a coloring book. I have not heard of that, but it sounds neat. That sounds really cool. I'll check it out. And then here's Kieran Buckley again. Last one we have for now. Do you think we see anything Metroid at E three? If, if we don't see that two D Metroid thing at this, then I no longer believe that's real. It's yeah, I, I think philosophy there. I think we'll see that 2D Metroid game there. I think that's right. That's that sounds yeah. right. And that, that's the kind of stuff I was like hearing and uh, unconfirmed. And then, uh, um, and then I can't now her name's escaping me. Arcade Girl 64 on Twitter I was saying like, yeah, that she thinks it's going to be there, and she's usually on Emily Emily I, Rogers. Yeah, right. I am less enthusiastic about the trilogy than I used to be. I don't know why, but I am. I, you know that the one ex retro employee was saying things and now it's just like the i'm trying to like set myself up for oh maybe that's just not happening for right. whatever reason it's metroid happening. prime 4 i don't think so i don't think we're seeing that yeah it, yeah it's too early there's it's gonna be a lot of zelda stuff at the c3 for for nintendo yeah. so if you guys have any more super chats send them we will get to them before the end of the show and in the meantime we have some questions from the discord let's get to those uh let's start here with benji bop let's see what the nicknames he gives us this week uh mm -hmm. Happy Friday, Jeff, patreon.com slash Jeff Grub Grub, and Mike, 90sDisney.com, and Nani. Yeah, thank, yeah you help you for, thank you for the plug there. Um, yeah. With Biomutant and Knockout City releasing last week to completely uh, indifferent reception, I believe he means, how much of that would you credit, or maybe, maybe different receptions? I, I don't know. How much of that would you credit to how they released the game? One game launched with a week-long free trial and is on uh, Game Pass Ultimate, and the other launched at $60 with no kind of beta or early access to my knowledge. Cur curious what your thoughts are. Thanks as always, and have a great weekend. Well, he probably does mean different reception where one, like people were talking about Biomutant and people weren't really talking about Knockout City, but I don't think, it was it was hard to kind of keep track of that. Uh, what do you think, Mike? Well, first off, I'm wondering why you scooched me over in the video thing. Uh, if why? I did, uh, oh, I did because I uh, messed, I messed, I made the window bigger. Hang on, is that better? You're a mess. Yeah, I'm sorry. My kids are yelling at me every three seconds for something. What? what I mean, it's better, but you usually have them touching. Make them touch. All right, yeah, I'll fix it. Hang on. You better. Anyways, oh, God, about, there uh, we go. Yeah. Uh, gosh. Uh, man, I wasn't listening to the question because I was so distracted by it. I'll be completely honest. I was about to wing it anyway. So what do you think, Jeff? <laughs> I think that uh, Biomutant and Knockout City got uh, – uh, I, I think it comes down to um, – well, they're very different games, but like Biomutant is trying to position itself as this, you know, sixty dollars sort of big game. And when people found out, it it was definitely a double A, kind of like a triple indie sort of thing. Uh, people, it felt like the rug was swept out from underneath them, and so people kind of reacted poorly. I think so. There was a lot of people who still wanted to believe the game was going to be great, and so they're still kind of putting their their, their hopes there are into some it. People still seem to like it. I know uh, our editor uh, Jason. Yeah, I don't. It. I don't hate it. I think it's a fine game to play, and I I just had low expectations, but I also didn't pay sixty dollars for it. So. It sounds like it could have benefited from early access. Yes, definitely. And then uh, Knockout City to me, like, I don't know what the what the popular reception to, to has been, but for me, it seems like people seem to like that game. I hear 
hear a lot of good things about that. I I, want to play it. It seems like it has a better reception, or at least people are are more interested in playing it for longer periods of time than Destruction All-Stars or something like that. So, um, but we'll see if people that, if that ends up with people like going past the trial and spending money on that game, I think that might be unlikely, but it is in Game Pass. So at least it'll do well there. All right. Um, another from Menji, what are all, what are you all's realistic expectations for Pokemon Legends Arceus? Which we didn't mention that got a release date, right? Yeah, it did. Uh, so January. Like January. So. Yeah. That seems, I don't know why, but a part of me is like, that seems early, it's especially for what they think. showed. Yeah. Like it kind of looked rough when they showed it. My expectations are actually low. I am not getting carried away with the whole. Oh, this is like Pokemon Breath of the Wild. I'm I, I'm trying to be realistic. I think, and if it's if it is amazing, that's great. That's fantastic. But I don't know. I, I'm hoping that maybe this is something that is going to be like a big beneficiary of a new Switch if that happens. But right. otherwise, I just I just don't know because it seems so ambitious and it just seems weird that it's it's coming out in six months or seven months. We haven't we've only really seen that one thing of it. I have no idea what to think. I, it, it's confusing to me. Yeah, I, I, I'm for me, I'm setting my expectations at I think it could be a step forward, but I feel like it's going to be it's going to feel like an unfinished idea. And then the, the sequel, I, I bet it's going to sell very well. Um, and then I bet it'll definitely get a sequel, and I bet the sequel will feel like, okay, now they fully realize what they were hoping to do with Arceus. Um, from Jake Bogdanov, Skyrim on PS5 is now completely off the table, right? Um, I don't, I guess I don't Skyrim's know about that. Skyrim's never off the table. And Skyrim's never off the table, <laughs> right? I don't, I mean, they've, They've released the Legend or the, I don't forget what they call it, the Definitive Edition or whatever it was, um, for PS4. They probably don't need to re-release that only for PS5. They likely yeah, wouldn't I mean, do what, that. Yeah, I mean, what are you going to get from it? Like, you know, unless, like, you desperately need to add haptic feedback or whatever to that. Yeah, I don't know. Right. I think I, we might be past the point where people are getting excited about that again. I think people are going to say... We just want to see Elder Scrolls Six. Yeah, yeah, but even like if they were to like do a, a, a remaster, like we see with Mass Effect, the, the remaster for that was released on PS4 and Xbox One, and then it works right. really well on your new systems. Uh, right. But it's not just for the new systems. Like, yeah, th- I think the idea of remasters releasing just for the new systems is a long way off, if ever a thing. Like, it might always be better to just be like, let's make it for the old systems, and you know, e- even if it's like four years later, right. PS4 I mean- is still going to be out there. Sonic Colors uh, Ultimate. That's you know, it's yeah. not listed for PlayStation Five and Xbox Series X. It's listed for PlayStation Four and, and Xbox. It's One not worth the effort. Yeah. It's not worth. Yeah. What, what? What's the difference? Hey, Brett Bingham, uh, real quick, clarified because he was the one who was talking about uh, you know a presentation slide. It he it Whoa. was Xbox. He says, but no, he's not referencing Starfield. This one is more difficult to see. So I I'll, ha- I'll have to I'll have to look closer and I'll I'll see what I come up with. Um, and, and since since I have your attention, Grimholm actually just asked chances of Elden Ring at SGF instead of E3. Some, Summer Game Fest. Uh Summer the Game ch- Fest. the chances are that on that are I don't know. Uh so f- for me it was um I would say I, I would think not, right? Right. Yeah, Abandon know. Amco's like supposed to participate in Summer Game Fest. So maybe, but but I'll just say I don't know, but I know it's I it's not going to be at the Xbox thing. That's all. And if it's not the Xbox thing, why isn't it the Xbox thing? They do seem to have the co-marketing deal. They were very interested in getting it. Uh, if it's not there, it's it's become, you know, and I've heard it's because From isn't ready to put it there. But maybe, maybe they maybe they're not ready because they were working on some other presentation with Bandai Namco separate from Xbox, and they didn't want to like just hand out the same trailer in two different places. I, I don't know that part. I don't know, and I'm hopeful. I hope that people get their Elden Ring sooner rather than later. Um, I know Omni on, on Reset Era said it's closer than it may than people may think it appears or whatever in, in a meme. Um, and I hope that means before E3, I, I just know that it's not an Xbox and the reason it's not an Xbox make me skeptical and make me want to say, people pump the brakes, don't get your hopes up. Uh, but I know that we don't do that here on our Elden Ring. We get our hopes up for every little thing. So, you know, sure. it's kind of, kind of a, a pointless thing to me for me to even say that. Um, from Slippery Fishes, what's the worst mistake Nintendo could make with the revision of with the Switch uh, revision? What do you think, Mike? What's the worst mistake what is Nintendo? The worst? Could... Not yeah. adding an audio port jack. No, uh, that's what they <laughs> did with the, the man, the Game Boy Advance SP. What is the worst thing they could do? I guess it would be adding something weird so that it, like people are gonna have our, have a hard time making these games work on the old Switch, right? Like they. For some reason, I decided to add two extra buttons to it or something weird. 
because like, we kind of had that with uh, the one 3ds right so it, like it had like an extra shoulder button finally yeah but nobody wanted to support it <laughs> really well because then there's the old ones who didn't have it and it became weird i feel like i should have a better answer for this do you have one because it's a great question yeah i i mean with their switch revision uh, the worst mistake they could make is making it only a, a console for the tv and not making it a handheld like, yeah that, like that that comes so, to mind right but that's like that's not gonna happen so I, that, that's why I, I wouldn't say it but i guess the biggest mistake is just is not going big enough right i, yeah. I think there are certain expectations for, for for this uh you know for games to beat more consistently target better frame rates and resolution even though i'm not as concerned about resolution but if people if this happens and this isn't a big enough deal and if it's not better enough to better uh to get more third party modern releases on there then i'm not quite sure what the point of it was yeah uh from nick turbo uh now that i'm a mod on discord can we definitively say that there has been no good Mega Man ever released mm. like should i unmod him mm, yeah <laughs> modding modding privileges revoked uh from yammy seth how likely do you think will we see switch pro exclusives from third party this e3 uh, maybe some PS4 po ports like Resident Evil and the Assassin's Creed games. Um, I think at this E3, I think it's possible. I think it's like, I think there's like a 25%, like a one in four chance that we see a third party, P or, uh, I'm sorry, Switch Pro exclusive game uh, soon. Maybe not, if, if they don't show the system, obviously they're not going to show this stuff. But if they show the system, maybe some third party partners are there to say, yeah, we got these games that now can run on this. I think that like, it'll be a game that already has DLSS support. So probably not uh, Resident Evil or Assassin's Creed, um, but, but yeah. Let's we'll give me an example. Um, I'm, trying, I'm trying to think, I'm not coming up with anything. Uh, I think like Jedi Fallen Order, I think got it eventually. Uh, that'd be neat. Yeah, yeah that would like make that. sense. That, that is a, kind of like the caliber of game. Yeah. In terms of like a little bit older, but still like, you know, known for, for looking good. That, right. Uh, that, that, yeah, I exactly. you. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll we'll wait and see. I I I, probably, I don't think Jedi Fallen Order is going to come to Switch, but just that's yeah. the, that's a, that was an example. Um, Souls Ninja, hi Jeff, hope you are well. Uh, doesn't say anything about hope and Mike as well, and I I appreciate that. Uh, well, do you he, know, as far as he knew, I was still banished. We'll yeah, that. that's good. Good point. Uh, do you know if Xbox will have some major day one Game Pass announcements at E3, uh, similar in scope to MLB The Show or Outriders? I don't know. I know there, there's still talks happening about that, though. Well, wasn't there something I saw you on uh, on a podcast saying that there's there's reason to believe that actually Psychonauts 2 might be shadow dropped after all? After we just, I think, what, a couple weeks ago, we said we didn't think that was happening? No, I said the opposite. I said it's not going to shadow oh. drop. Yeah. Okay, well, never mind then. Yeah. Screw me. Yeah. Um, but, like, in terms of, like, uh, major day one Game Pass announcements at E3, I, 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 I'm hopeful, like, they, they'll get something really big. Uh, I haven't heard People are hoping for other. Persona. People keep hoping Persona is going to be one of them. And that, that would like, be great. That would if be Persona good. 5 is going to come to Xbox, you may as well make right. a Game Pass thing on day one, right? Right, because it, it it has worked out really well for stuff like Dragon Quest. So I yeah, I think that that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, from Ray Mogos, happy Friday, gents, and welcome back, Mikey. Now let's murder a game's legacy. You must oh. buy one game, rent one I game, like game, and one game goes away forever. Horizon Zero Dawn, Middle Earth, Shadow of War, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. So hmm. okay, this is interesting. Yeah. Like yeah, because I'm not. This is interesting because I don't feel very strong about any of these, but also, there it's about the same. I actually, Shadow. I like Shadow of Mordor. I haven't played Shadow of War. I even installed it on my Series X when I got it. Like this is going to be one of the backwards compatibility games I played. And then as I ran out of space to like install new things, it was one I had to give up on. But I still want to play it. So maybe I'll <laughs> actually buy Shadow of War just because I want to play it, and I do like Lord <laughs> of the Rings. And then um, I'll rent, yeah, I'll rent Horizon and I'll destroy Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is, you know, there's nothing wrong with it, but it, it and I think um, the complaint with that and Valhalla is true. Those games are too big. They are just too big and, un, un, and unfocused for me. They're fine. And also, I, I find the performances, like the voice acting in the animation, just not quite up to what i would expect from these big triple a games at this point especially when you look at something like horizon even or, or some of these other things it, there's there's like a weird cheapness to certain aspects of the modern assassin's creed games that is weird to me considering how incredible a lot of it is i think part of the problem is that the scope is too big 
I am going to buy Assassin's Creed Odyssey because I really like that game quite a lot. It's it's and there's a ton of game there. Uh, there's a lot of game there. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and uh, I enjoyed just kind of wandering around that world and leveling up my character and, and everything. Yeah, I like it a lot. I think I will rent Horizon Zero Dawn because I do want to give that game another chance. And I'm gonna I'm gonna say goodbye to Middle Earth Shadow of War Rude. because I. I feel like I played Shadow of Mordor and I'm good. I'm good. I really like that game, but I'm good now. And I, I, I'm just not, I'm also not a huge Lord of the Rings guy. So uh, that, that is kind of where that's coming from. Uh, but I bet, you know, if I try Horizon Zero Dawn and bounce off it, I'll really regret that I wasn't able to rent Middle Earth Shadow of War. So, uh, cause I, I, you know, I, I tried Shadow of War a little bit and I just, it didn't hook me right away. So I'm like, I, I, I guess I bounced off that too. I will say in terms of these like really... But, you know, and I call like mappy map games. I, I probably like Ghost of Tsushima the most in mm -hmm. terms of that style, at least that I'm thinking of right now. Like that would right. be. Right. Ghost of Tsushima is one that I, I like I have on my PS5 to like really, really try. Because when I came out, it was like other stuff was coming out. And I'm like, oh, I think I like this game. I'll, I'll give it a shot more when I get a chance. And I just haven't had that chance yet. Um, All right. Let me cross that out two more questions from eric uh sonic games are generally maligned by press and hardcore gamers uh n never on this podcast though uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh but do they still sell well generally also yeah. how many king ice sonic chains are you gonna get um <laughs> one for wearing and one displaying at home uh yeah, yeah at least two of course yeah two, I, well then a third one for friends yes uh, good point yes they make great for father's visitors. day gifts also so. <laughs> uh Look, I, I, I might, I mean, I'll have to look and see how expensive they are. Maybe maybe we could review one, Mike. Give me a review sample. Um, <laughs> uh, I I think these games sell, tell, I think they tend to sell pretty well still. Um, yeah, I don't know. They still keep making them, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I think they, I think you'd be surprised. Like, they're never going to be like, you know, you don't see them in the NPD reports a lot of the time. I'm sure they yeah, must crack point. the top 10, but I don't think they're in the top five. Hey, hey, here's a question based off of this. What's what's more popular, Zelda or Sonic? That's been the hotness. Don't uh, uh, do like all of the kind of funny guys actually think Sonic is more popular than I, Zelda. I, I think Barrett Courtney, one of the producers, is the only one that thinks that uh, Zelda is more popular than Sonic. So it, they're, it's been, they're all crazy. Okay, so let, let, let's like let, let's talk this through. So they think it's because if you go to like someone's mom and you ask them who is this character and you show them link and you show them sonic they'll know who sonic is that's because that's just because kids like sonic a lot like kids do love sonic but to be clear a lot of that is them more watching the cartoons and stuff like they'll play they'll play the games and i and that's the other thing they say is like oh there's all these sonic cartoons and there's right. a sonic movie it's like there could be more zelda cartoons if nintendo wanted to right they, they just said to. no for decades because and they've like netflix wanted to make like instead of making the witcher netflix was gonna make zelda and then nintendo yeah. got mad at them for leaking it and like say get away from me uh uh netflix yeah, we don't we don't even need you yeah you're gross and it's like yeah. sega would be like Oh God, please take us. Please make a show. Please make a show about Sonic. Uh, that To me, the, there is desperation around Sonic that is not around uh, Zelda. Yes. And that I associate a lack of disparity with, or lack of de that desperation with uh, being popular, I guess. Maybe, maybe that there's like some trauma there. Also, yeah. But there was also a, a Zelda cartoon and it was popular at, at you know, for all, uh, the, the big thing here is no Sonic game has ever come close to selling as well as Breath of the Wild. Like not yes. even close. Uh, so, okay, listen, I think Sonic, the hedgehog one as a pack-in game probably did still sell better because there was like i think they sold like what like 40 million genesis and, and um, a lot of a lot of hey, those that, probably that specifically said do not resell yeah right yeah but, but i agree with you if you co come if you uh, i for me the popularity question is tough if you say awareness and it's just people recognizing the character i think yeah, it's sonic I but but that's to me that's not popular but that's popularity a question between that Zel people... like sonic and link and that's right. not the question it's about you're these, right. like yeah uh, i i don't know but I like think... no you're right but like people like 23 million people said i'm going to spend a significant amount of money to buy a zelda game and to me that is just a, a bar of popularity that sonic does not match does no, not come, sonic come rangers to. is not going to sell 20 million copies no way no how even if it like came out it was very good right yeah 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 it's not, right. not gonna happen no, and, and people would like, be like, yeah. It could be on more platforms, too. It's not going to happen. And you could go up to a stranger on the street and be like, do you like Sonic? And they'll be like, yeah, I know who Sonic is. I like Sonic. But that's not like a call to action. That's like, right. there's no cost there. And so what is the cost of saying, I like, yeah, sure. I, I'm, I don't even think about Sonic until you ask me. All right, yeah, whatever. I like Sonic. But like, you're like, okay, here are two games. 
one is a Sonic game and one is a Zelda game, which one do you want to spend sixty dollars on? It's going to be Zelda. Uh, right. Zelda's going to win that. People. Like your parents do know what the Legend of Zelda is. Also. Yes, that's like, true. That's yes, that's still, true. It's still, it's not like you're asking them. Do you know about Sonic or Horizon Zero Dawn? Like they'll, they'll, right. they'll know. Georgie just said in super chat, Sega should just sell Sonic to Nintendo. I don't, I don't think so. I mean, gosh, what what does Sega have left at that point? They have Yakuza, right? So mm-hmm. they, they wouldn't do that. I mean, like Sega is very happy they have Sonic. I'm not trying to like be like, oh, Sonic's like doesn't matter or doesn't make money or shit. But like, I. I think it's not that a significant amount of people. And to be clear, not most people. Whenever they do the polls, uh, Zelda wins. I got to say, that enough uh, people... I'm glad that you are right here, Mike. I'm, I'm relieved. Yeah. I'm well, glad that I was going to come out on the other side. No, yes. look, yeah, I, I love Sonic. And I, honestly, like, my brand has always been probably more associated with Sonic than Zelda. But come on, there's no way. Yeah. Uh, from Sweet Nicole, any word on if Valve will be at Xbox E3? Uh, no. No, they won't. A Valve or a Valve? Uh, uh, if valve software will be there <laughs> um yes uh okay yeah that does it for this for the uh, discord questions any more super chats no i think we're caught up all right okay cool so uh it's been a long show big part of that is uh you know it's been a mess and it's i feel busy. like i've left yeah we've been busy as well um mike do you want to talk about any games or is there anything we can even really talk about i, nah. I talked about biomutant which is the game i i played that i can talk about and i've said about everything i want to say about it like it's fine and i think that if you find it for cheap i think you might have a good uh, an okay time with it maybe they'll update it a little bit here and there and it'll get even better but it is very routine it's like all of the missions are cookie cutter and i, I don't just mean like oh you're doing the same thing i mean like when you interact with the characters after doing the mission they say basically the same exact thing every time and the narrator says the same thing every time and the things you get are basically the same thing every time it's um but but still it's an interesting world to walk around in and i think the characters are ugly in an interesting way like those r- weird rat fox things look kind of neat in, in my opinion uh but if you are like looking at this game and wonder if it's worth 60 dollars, and you're like repelled by anything that you've heard i think just wait and see wait and see if you can get it cheaper and uh and by then you'll probably have find something else to play i just right now i wouldn't no, buy it because disagree. you're dying the only thing left to do is to try it yourself yeah right <laughs> Yeah. I disagree. Uh, it, I, I just, if you are dying to play a game right now, tr- just go in your backlog, find something else, uh, sh- mm. and you're going to have some games that, coming out soon that, that are going to be much better. That is always a problem with these. Like, I want to be like, there should be room for these, like, you know, mid-tier games. But it is like, man, there's there's a lot of good games. Right. There's, pro- there's probably really good ones that you were probably more confident or good that you haven't played yet. So it, it it's it, that's why it's always been difficult for double A games. That's why yeah. they usually succeed if they strongly lean into niches. Like, like yes. you know, like the big computer RPGs, they, they have a, a market, and yeah, that's I, why. I will say that, like, I am glad that someone of, of, on the, um, what is, like, they're not really indie, they're, they're a publisher under THQ Nordic, or they're being published by THQ Nordic, but it's that, it is that, you're right, that double A, that B game space, and we hope that maybe these games can, like, rise up and kind of meet our expectations, and I'm glad that the developer has proven that you can at least get in the conversation of, I hope this game is good. Uh, I want this game to be good because I would love to play one of those right now. Uh, it got our attention. And I think that in the future, we will see more studios of this size. 20 people made this game, make a game like this that really does meet our expectations. Like we've seen in other genres, like um, uh, platformers, uh, uh, 3D platformers now if can come from an indie studio and be great. And they meet our expectations. And maybe eventually open world games, map games will be the same way. Uh, and we won't have to rely on Assassin's Creed every single year. Yeah, we got a couple more super chats. Brutal Enigma, anything better visually than Horizon Zero Dawn at E3? Uh, uh, I, I bet we'll see something at least as pretty as that. Uh, it's not going to be Halo, right? But uh, no, no, I, yeah, I, I mean, that might you know, be the standard. I think it's, yeah, I mean, I don't, you know, is Ratchet and Clank going to be at E3? Well, I guess we'll have to wait and see well, if that shows up. Sure, probably but not, but yeah. It uh, might like, be like a quick reminder hey, go buy this. Yeah. But well, Sony's not even there, so no. No, so yeah, I'm right, exactly. I'm talking um, about Yeah. So I I don't know if anything it'll probably be a game that like oh this looks as good as Horizon uh, Forbidden West we'll we'll, we'll wait and see I don't know um, uh, oh, yeah, this, another one. but this story just says it is a it is a good weekend folks Paul Jeff who secretly controls the Game Pass algorithm and keeps recommending I play Kingdom Hearts can no longer do that <laughs> is, is, are they taking Kingdom Hearts off of there this weekend it hey, must but, be it must be yeah um, and that's that's good Darn. news to me. 
Darn, you guys yeah. are missing out. You better speed run that whole series while you can. I did actually have, I do have it on my Xbox and just cause I'm like, maybe my kids will want to watch this, but I'm never actually going to play it. So uh, whatever. Um, all right, Mike, uh, if we have no more super chats, we have no more, no more questions, no more games to talk about. We'll be back probably. I don't even know if we could talk about any of the games we've been playing next week. I guess we'll have to look and see. Yeah, I think people can infer, but I, I forget. I forget. Yeah, if we can, even, even can. Maybe not, actually. I don't I think, think it's, so. I think it's too early. Yeah. So, man, that's going to yeah, suck. So. Okay. Uh, well, so we'll have to play some games for next week. Uh, yes. But yeah, uh, until then, though, I guess we should get out of here. I, I'm going to hit the outro button right now. Uh, Mike, why don't you tell people where they could find you on the Internet? You could find me on Twitter at Tolkoto, T-O-L-K-O-T-O. That's my favorite place to yell at Jeff. <laughs> also find me on 90s Disney, my 90s Disney podcast at 90sdisney.com. And I am, uh, I'm Jeff Grubb on Twitter, uh, Jeff Grubb on Twitch, uh, where I do the Game Mess show each Tuesday morning. Uh, we'll probably do a few more, more regularly throughout the weeks uh, as... Um, as E3 gets closer and more news happens. I think if if Nintendo does anything with the Switch Pro, I'll definitely do an episode before Tuesday. Um, I, How Games Make Money, a new episode with the, the CEO of Colossal Entertainment, which makes City Skylines. Um, it was a very good conversation. Uh, you can check that out now. That's out on the feed. I Make sure, I, got, I think I need to put that on the Patreon feed. I think I forgot to do that. I'll do that as well. Uh, speaking of the Patreon, patreon.com slash Jeff Grubb. Um, that's the best way to like get in the Discord and find the secret channels in the Discord industry secrets and podcast producers as a podcast producer you can hang out mike's there all the time we talk about the shows like how we can make them better uh, if you have any questions for us about like making the shows about uh like, things we should talk about that's a good place to put that as well um and then yeah we're gonna we're gonna be pretty busy as, as e3 continues to heat up we'll be doing these shows i think e3 week we're gonna probably do a show a night maybe uh depending on how busy we are i think even if like mike is like writing i'll come on and do an update with you guys here on uh, on the podcast feed or on um the, the game mess uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get there yeah we'll, we'll see I, I, I don't want to commit you to anything until we actually talk about it like uh, but yeah I think, I think we'll be like in the past we've done e3 shows each night and when we were there physically so i'd like to do that again so we'll see if we can make that happen like... yeah uh, anything else mike as we wait for the music to play us off no, no, I'm pretty, pretty. You don't want, uh, you don't want to talk about your D weekend. anymore? My D? No, I gotta practice my D. Yeah, all gotta right. Gotta practice on my D. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I, I, I do want to try uh, to play a little bit more Biomutant, but I, I think I'm gonna probably. Put I don't. That, yeah, you're just, you're just not even interested. Not even, not really. Right. I, well, it was a few weeks ago. You're like, I was like, what is that game? All right, the music's getting loud. I think we're being played off. Bye, everybody. Bye. No, not yet.